Hello, 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 Facebook. I am Dr. Myla Bennett of Adair Bella Plastic Surgery and Medical Spa in Johns Creek, Georgia. And um, I finished with my first patient early, so I'm waiting on my second one to get here. So I thought I would do some motivational talking. We talked about plastic surgery last night, so. But I have decided what my next plastic surgery topic will be. And I'm gonna talk about breast lifts and breast reductions next because I had a few questions that I missed on the video about that. And then also my YouTube followers, somebody asked me to talk about that. So um, I'll talk about that next. It'll probably be um, Sunday or Monday when I get on to talk about that. But um, I thought this morning I know some people are at work, or some people may be on their way to work, um, so they may have to catch the replay. But I thought this morning I w would talk about people making their dreams come true. Good morning to Leigh, hi Rosemary, hi LaShonda. You guys that are on with me, if you could please share the video and let people know that I'm on. And um, I wanna start off with the few people that are on here and I would like for you guys to tell me what you would do if you weren't afraid like what are you afraid of that you really want to do what do you dream about every day and you're just like when this happens then i'll do it or whatever or if you're watching somebody else live out a dream that you have what is that tell me what it is good morning nasine good morning denise because um what i've discovered the, the what i've discovered in the last few years since I came, hi Sabrina, since I came to Atlanta, um, is that people are really afraid of like everything. And I didn't really realize me deciding to quit my job and move here to start my own practice was kind of, um, I was taking a huge risk and I didn't, I, I guess I knew I was taking a risk, but I didn't even realize how huge of a risk it was. And when I look back on it now, I, I'm like, that was almost, it, it kind of almost feels reckless sometimes what I did in the way that I did it. But I think sometimes um, not knowing what is coming is not sometimes, most of the time, not knowing what's coming, what lies ahead is what makes some people paralyzed but um, it's what made me be willing to do it. Like if I don't know, if you don't know what you don't know. So I wasn't afraid because I didn't realize all the things that were <laughs> ahead of me. Now, knowing if I knew all this stuff, like cause a lot of times people think they just need to know. If I could just know, if I could just know what's gonna happen, then I would be more um, willing to do it. And honestly, if you knew it was gonna happen, you probably wouldn't do it. How many people here pledge a sorority? Like. If you knew, people try to tell you to prepare you, but if you knew what you were going to go through before you did it, you probably wouldn't do it. Like if you for real knew, but by the time you figure it out, you're too far in. So you have to keep going. So that's actually a good thing because you don't have things to freak you out and stop you in your tracks and force you to keep living the same year over and over and over again for like 20 years. People will come out the, the at the beginning of the year saying, New Year, New Me, with all these plans um, that they're going to do their New Year's resolution this and their New Year's resolution that. And then they go and live the exact same year that they lived the year before. And I don't want you guys to fall into that trap and look up and be 70 years old, 80 years old, and feeling like, you're, you know, it's too late now. If you could do it over, you would do this or you would do that. And even if you're still alive at 70 and you still are feeling you're feeling that way i still think you can do it like you don't have to be 20 years old to go after your dreams as long as you're still here that means that god still has a purpose for your life if you choose to accept it doesn't matter how old you are but people are so afraid of everything and 58 years is young and if you're in good health that's even better so this is interesting. Everybody's telling me if they weren't scared, they would get plastic surgery. That actually kind of makes me sad. Hold on one second. Uh, do you want to use Cutie as well? I probably won't use that one. Okay, so just OG? Uh, or the Nubie, the one that breaks up for you? Probably just OG. Okay. 
we named my liposuction cannulas. I'm about to do some lipo in a little bit. <laughs> and she's asking me which cannulas I want. And we've got nicknames for them. Now, I am a plastic surgeon. And it really saddens me that what everybody is saying on here. Gigi, is that you? Yeah, what's that? Facebook. Is that my Facebook? This Facebook Live. <laughs> she ran out of here. <laughs> um, it makes me sad that that's what y'all are talking about. I'm talking about life and y'all are talking about physical stuff. I mean, I like, you know, I love doing a good tummy tuck, but what in your life that's not physical that you would do if you're not afraid? I'm not even going to entertain those. I think that's kind of what's wrong with the world right now. People are so caught up in just the physical stuff. And it's important to be, I'm not saying you guys aren't whole. I'm not talking about y'all, but I'm just saying in general, I see people and they aren't whole. Like I had a lady that came in. What's today? Friday on Wednesday. And it, just in my consultation and exchange with her, I'm like, yeah, no. I, like, what she was asking for, I could totally do. It wasn't, but she was clearly doing it for the absolute wrong reasons and not in a good space mentally. So I told her no. Like, we don't, I think people don't put enough energy into their um, soul People don't put enough energy into their dreams. Um, people think, and I think social media does has a lot to do with this. It's kind of toxic. There's good and bad to social media, but the bad is really affecting our um, society. Like people get so caught up on things that really aren't that important. They're so caught up on physical things. They're so caught up on what they look like compared to other people. You know, and the people that they're comparing themselves to, they're looking at through filters and everything and Facetune and all this other stuff. And then they're comparing themselves to these folks and trying to get that level of perfection that the person they're looking at doesn't even have. You know, so um, I think when people are more confident in themselves, they're less likely to um, be depressed, obviously. They're less likely to end up in situations that could hurt them when it comes to plastic surgery. Um, it's you know, that level of desperation that some people end up having because of what they keep seeing over and over again on social media um, wouldn't be there if people were more confident. And that is an inside thing. That has nothing to do with what you look, look like. Confidence does not come from your physical appearance. Even if you get, you think, I'll be more confident when my tummy is flat or I'll be more confident when I don't have these bags under my eyes. Um, that... People will get the surgery and still be um, lack confidence. It happens all the time because confidence has nothing to do with what you look like. So, okay, I saw somebody put up something. Yes. So, hold on. Start a nonprofit for teenage girls. Okay. And so, Renata, why are you afraid to start a nonprofit? Like, what, why, what are you afraid of? What are your, con what are your concerns? Nina says, not afraid, but just have to learn more and get the right resources. Okay, Nina, that's a good start. Okay, that's fair. Um, but the problem is that people will be learning and checking out resources for years. Like, there's a point where you have to start because I don't care how much you learn, how much you study, what it is that you're trying to do, how much you try to prepare for what it is that you're trying to do. Got it. Thanks. Thanks, Gigi. Um, how much you're trying to prepare for. There's things that you're not going to be prepared for, period. At some point, you have to jump. Like, yes, you have to do research and do your homework. And, okay, I'll give you, I'll, let me give you an example. So, when I started planning to open up my practice. I was still um, living in Indiana and I had a job and I was just thinking about starting my own practice. I was thinking about whether or not I was gonna renew my contract. But while I was thinking about it, I was putting together a business plan to see if I thought this was something feasible to do, that I could do while I was still in the last place and didn't even know when or if I was gonna quit. I started preparing. I worked on that business plan for probably six or eight months, like a long time. I started checking out different cities to see where I might want to go if I decided to quit. I still wasn't sure what I was going to do or when I was going to do it. And then when I finally decided to do it, 
we had this wonderful business plan. It was like 30 pages long. We had the SBA consultant at the um, local college helped us put it together. It was all, you know, it had all these numbers in it, like projections, how much the bills are going to be, how much um, I should be able to bring in, how, like planned growth, all of that stuff is in there. What my marketing strategy was going to be, you know, I had all of my, um, I had looked at all of my competitors in the market that, you know, I was choosing to go into. I had all the stuff figured out. The business plan was just to, to like, honestly, which I didn't understand that then, was really just to get a loan. I mean, yeah, it made you. It makes you think about what you're stepping into, so that you don't just go reckless into something. But once I actually, once the doors actually opened, those projections were just projections. Like sometimes I didn't get nowhere near close to what I said I what I projected out, and then I had to figure out because now if I if I don't. Um, if I don't make it work, I could lose my whole business and I don't put all of this energy and all of this money and all of this time into it. So I had to adjust and figure it out. That was the majority of my first shoot. Now I still have to adjust and figure things out. Not as often as I did when I first opened. There's always going to be stuff that you don't know for the rest of your life. If you're, if you know everything, then it's time for you to you're not stretching yourself enough and you're not growing and you should be always growing. So you should always have periods of uncertainty and you should always have pe uh, periods where you, where you may be afraid. If I'm not afraid of something, if I don't have something that I'm afraid of, then I'm like, what am I? Okay. What do I need to be doing? Like if you got it all figured out and you're perfect at it and can do it with your eyes closed, then that means you're not growing. And so you're totally not living in God's divine purpose for you if you got it all figured out and worked out down to a science. You're not ever going to get to the point where you know everything. So at some point, you do some research, yes. You get you figure out what your resources are, yes. But at some point, you have to just push go and start and then figure stuff out as you fall. Stand up, brush yourself off, assess what just happened, try to, um, which, what you are able to figure out and see just happened, don't repeat it. <laughs> um... Or if it was something good, like, oh, that worked. And then you hold on to that and keep and take the next step. You just have to go. You can't wait for stuff to be perfect because it'll never be perfect. I had a um, lady come in. Um, she was a patient first. And then, she, you know, I was helping her with, like, business stuff. And she worked on a business plan for so long that the business was obsolete. She started working on the business. The, the business plan she has started was about 15 years before we ever met each other. She did this business. She was holding on to this business plan for 15 years. And now, by the time we were interacting, I'm looking at it, and it was a, it was completely obsolete. She was preparing for so long. It was like 20 pages long with all of these graphs and charts. It was a lot of work, except it was useless because she waited so long and was trying to plan so much and make sure she had everything figured out. You're not going to have everything figured out. You're just not. Fear of the unknown, failure versus confidence to step out on faith, if that makes sense. Okay, it does totally make sense. So I'm better at the step out on faith thing now than I was um, a few years ago. And what I've realized is that on my journey of starting my um, business in this town where no one knew me um, with three little kids and all that kind of stuff, like I learned it strengthened my faith i've always like i you know i've been a christian my whole life you know i i go through spurts of going to church and then not you know um i've always known god but sometimes he's more present in my i'm not gonna say more present because he's always there but sometimes i'm more in tune with him than other times but this whole journey of starting my business has brought me so much closer to God. And as I got closer to him and I saw him pull me out of things that seemed like I couldn't get pulled out of, it made it very clear to me that God does. My sister was trying to call me. It made it very clear to me that God does exist. And I've been, I've gotten through so many things that were seemingly impossible that I don't even worry anymore. Like one of my girlfriends, we were, um, you know, I'm into astrology and stuff like that. And so we were studying the stuff like with the reading up about not studying, but reading up on the, the eclipse that's happening. Like Mars is in retrograde and I think Mercury is in retrograde too. And so a lot, a lot of wacky things are happening um, in people's worlds with finances and 
deals and relationships, like it's a really pivotal time astrologically right now, all the way up until August 18th. And um, one of my girlfriends, she called me and she was like, oh my God, girl. And she was telling me all this stuff and sending me all this stuff to read. And she was getting so freaked out from it. And she was texting me all day, like, as she found more information and it was, she, she was totally getting freaked out. And I'm like, yeah, girl. Yeah. You know, it was interesting to me. And I, and I believe there's something to that stuff. Cause God made the planets and the universe and all the other stuff. And I've, you know, I've actually seen things like, you know, happen that are in alignment with the things that are predicted astrologically. But I wasn't worried, even though it was all this chaos that they were predicting. She's like, you know, she's like, you not worried. <laughs> and I was like, well, no. But girl, if that stuff happened, I'm thinking, and I, I, she was so fascinated by the fact that I wasn't worried. And I was just like, you know, I have been through so much stuff the last three years of my life that I'm not scared because I know for sure God is going to pull me through it. Like he always does. I mean, I have been in really tough situations, scary situations, like not knowing how I was going to get through it. And he always delivers me from it. He always delivers me through it. So I wasn't even worried. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I read the stuff and I keep that in the back of my mind. If I know people are in a situation because of the, because of the planetary alignment that they might be a little more wacky or sensitive or whatever. Like I keep that in the back of my mind, but it doesn't drive me. Like I know that God has got me. And so even if I do, even if I do walk into a storm because of the, the, the way the planets are in alignment, he's going to pull me through it. Cause at the end of the day, God is in charge of all of that stuff. So I just don't worry about what's not here. You know, something that's, I got, if I owe somebody $20,000 next week and I got $5,000 and I have no idea where the other 15 is going to come from, that's next week. <laughs> so me, like, I'm not saying like, don't try to come up with a strategy to take care of the stuff you need to take care of, but don't be consumed with the worry of it. Like, because then you're not clear to be productive. And then that's telling God that you're not, that you don't have all the faith that you should just yet. And you don't believe in him. So I don't worry nearly as much as I did three years ago. I don't try to control everything like I used to, because the one huge lesson I've learned is I can't control everything. You can't control everything. So when you sit there and say, you're going to research for this many years so that you can make sure you know everything that's going to happen and you can be prepared for all of that stuff. You're not trusting God. That's a problem. And you can't control all that stuff anyway. You can plan everything and then he'll be like, oh, that's what your plan is. And then he'll do something that's all the way over there where the stuff that you plan for is not even usable. You, the stuff you plan for is obsolete. So you got to have some level of trust and just go. I would like my own business doing something. I just don't know what kind of business. Okay, Nassine, that's a really good... I'm glad you said that. So a lot of times in this day and age, people... Um, are able to create a lifestyle and a business out of like almost anything. So if you're not sure what that is, but you know that you want to be an entrepreneur, start off with the things that people ask you about all the time. What is it that your friends come always tend to come to you for and you, and you're good at it and you enjoy the engagement with other people in relation to that particular thing Start there because that's probably what God purposed your life for. It's usually that thing that seems like it's um, not a big deal to you, but other people come to you for it because you, you're you good at it or you're intuitive about it or whatever. It's probably something along those lines. Pray and just do it. Sorry for the loss of your parents, but make a plan A and B and just go. Okay, Lanika. Um... I miss what Sabrina Bowers, I must have missed what Sabrina Bowers wrote, but you said to make a plan A and a plan B and just go. Now this might um, shock a lot of people, but I tend to say stuff that, I tend to think about things different than everyone else. Everybody's always talking about plan A and plan B, and I have never been a person to make a plan B. My plan B is to make plan A work. If it's something that you really want to do, if you spend all your time working on plan B, that means you're planning to fail. You, and you need to go all in with plan A. So I personally don't think, you're sitting there making two plans. That's you trying to control stuff again. That's you giving up before you even get your feet, get your hands dirty. Um, 
And so I think that if you're spending energy working on plan B, I think that's a lack of faith in yourself, in God. Like you just, um, I don't think you should plan to fail. And I think plan B is planning to fail. So I personally don't agree with the plan B thing. I didn't have a plan B. I came here and I started going. And um, while I was getting things set up, I um, had side things that weren't pulling away from what I was trying to do with my business. But it wasn't like a, if the business don't work, then I'm just going to abort and jump over to this. Like, because I was betting on myself. Like, so I didn't, I, I just didn't plan on not making it. And I made it. So Mary J. Cantrell Way said, I would step out of corporate and start a business. Sounds weird, but one business is to be healing and funeral singer. It helps people. I do it well. It doesn't sound, um, it doesn't sound weird. Um, and you can start that, you can start that business, sing a funeral singer. You can start that business while you're in corporate. You can start off just singing on Saturdays because there's a lot of funerals on Saturdays. You can just start off there. If you don't work corporate on Saturday, you're one who could actually start without cutting loose your corporate fur right away. When it comes to the point where the job is interfering with your ability to produce in your business, that's when it's time to start to cut the strings. But when you first start, you don't have to cut the strings. Like when I first started planning for my um, practice, I still had a job. I didn't even know when I was going to quit. And then when I decided that I wasn't going to renew my contract and I, we had moved to um, Atlanta and I still had um, two more months to work and was get still getting paychecks while I got stuff set up and I used the money from my job to to get me set up here. And then when I got here, I started doing work contract work for this um, liposuction center. And I did that until it started to interfere with the Darabella. And once I started to have consequences to me working at that lipo center um, on the Darabella, then that's when I stopped working at the lipo center. So, you know, you you got to be strategic about it and then you have to listen and I was scared now when I stopped doing when I was coming to the point where I was realizing that I needed to stop doing liposuction at that lipo center I was petrified like it took me probably three or four months of saying I need to quit before I actually did it I was so scared because that was how I paid myself like my business was not in a position to pay me so the lipo center was how I paid my personal bills, which were a lot. Like I had a plastic surgeon's overhead, you know, my bill, my monthly personal expenses were a lot. Um, so I was so scared, but I'm still here. And that was two years ago that I quit that. Started performing art school for troubled youth. So you can start off with um do, uh doing performing arts programs like through somebody else's established school um I know my kids my kids um school they will bring in people to teach different things to the students like there's a way to start start getting your name circulating around is doing doing the good work and getting building relationships and meanwhile you should be working on the business plan and figure out financially what it takes to get a performing art school off the ground and start slowly pecking away at that stuff while you're actually doing this, doing what it is that you want to do, building a reputation. Fail forward, meaning you might things you're failing, but they're just stepping stones. Right. So you have to fail. It's a requirement to be successful. Like, so trying to avoid failure is actually, if you never fail, that means you're not growing. That means you're, that's back to what I was saying earlier. If you're, doing something perfectly with your eyes closed and you know you don't even have to think about it you're not being stretched and the only way to stretch yourself you have to fail like you can't ever be the best at something without sucking at it first period like the first time you do something you're not going to be great at it like i remember the first time i operated i couldn't get the knots i couldn't get the sutures when i would tie my knots the knots would just come loose 
I remember I was um well it wasn't my first surgery. That wasn't my first surgery. It was when I when you first start surgical training, you don't actually get to do surgery at first, obviously. And um so it was in my first year of plastic surgery training and the my attending kept he would he would throw the suture and then he would he would hand me the strings like the two ends like tie it. So he would he would throw the suture like the, you know the needle with the stitch attached to it he would put it in the tissues where he wanted it and then he would pop the the needle off of the string and then he passed me the string to tie. And I remember I tied that thing like four or five times and it kept coming to loose and he was like this is your last time and I'm gonna do it myself and I'm like that's the worst if they have to take it from you and do it themselves like that's like dagger to the heart and I'm sitting there like I gotta get it I gotta get it and I tied it and it came loose again so he took it and tied it and I'm like <laughs> I was so I'm like <laughs> so I'm thinking like he's gonna think I suck da, da, da. that man knew exactly he probably went through the same thing and somebody said the same thing to him when his knots wouldn't tie 10 15 years ago when he was in my shoes and now I can tie a knot like literally with my eyes closed. I mean, it's fun. Like tying knots is like, I, I don't even have to think about it. That's not an area that I need to be stretched right now, but there's other areas that I need to be stretched. But I remember my mom is a um, hairstylist and she does um, sew-ins and stuff. And I remember years ago, um, this, but I was in, tra I was in r surgical training and I sometimes like after a month or so or three weeks or something, one of my tracks would come loose with um like the the suit suture the, the thread would like come loose on one end and then I would have to like get it tightened up and stuff like that and so when the when she did my hair one time I was like how many knots are you throwing ma and she's like two and I'm like throw one more so in surgery we always throw at least three knots when we tie a suture off depending on what type of suture it is and some of the sutures you have to tie five or six but the type of thread she used is similar to the suture we use that requires three knots. I'm like, Ma, just put one more knot in there. She started putting one more knot in there. I haven't had a loose track that she's done since. Simple stuff, but I became an expert at it from having knots fall apart for, you know, when I first started. And I had to fail at it in order to analyze it and figure out what I was doing wrong. But if I would have made a mistake and did it right by mistake, that's actually more dangerous than um, getting it wrong at first because when you get stuff right by mistake it gives you a false sense of accomplishment and you move past it and then when you get into a sticky situation and you need to do it in a different way you don't you don't have the capacity to do it because you don't even know why you're doing it right in the first place so you don't have a you don't have it it diminishes your ability to pivot when you need to it makes it so that you d can't problem solve when you get in a tight if you don't ever fail because you don't know you have no you have no idea how like the stuff works so failing is necessary it's okay it's a part of it it's a part of the process you can't skip failure Uh, thank you, Mary. I'm starting a second career as an esthetician after all these years serving in the military. Go for it, girl. Um, so I have, I, I know a lot of estheticians who start off with other careers and they're like, I just always love skin. I always love skincare. I always love makeup. I always love, and I just say, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I hear that so much. Like I hear that so much and just do it. You can make a very, um, satisfying, lucrative career in aesthetics Go for it. If I wasn't afraid of failing, I would love to go back to school. I'm a wife and a mother of six, and I'm currently a cosmetologist, but I would love to have a degree in something that is more solid. I love what I do, but I feel that there is an expiration on this field. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Okay. Um, this is going to sound really strange coming from a doctor, but I think degrees are overrated. If you don't know what you're exactly you're going to school for, it's not necessarily more solid than what you're doing right now. Um, okay, certain careers, if you want to do it, you have to go to get formal education. So obviously I had to do it. I, I wanted to be a doctor. S but if you don't even know why you're going, just to get a degree to get a degree, you're just making more debt for yourself. You you It should be a means to an end. Like just collecting degrees because you're feeling restless is not if you don't have a plan for the degree 
um it's a it's a big investment of time and money and it might not even it could it it could put you in a in a worse financial place if you don't have a real reason for getting it cosmetology um has changed a lot in the last few years and i know i listen to my mother complain about the changes all the time she's like everybody going on youtube and that they, they learning how to do the stuff they self and, and when everybody went natural every first of all everybody never does anything so but people always talk like that everybody doing this and everybody doing that everybody ain't doing nothing everybody doesn't do anything there's seven billion people on the planet there are folks who are never going to do their own hair from a youtube video i am one of them i'm never doing my own hair um, I didn't go natural. I have no desire to do that. I get a relaxer. I need my touch up, honey. I don't want to be nothing against the natural girls. It's just not my thing. So there's people who still, so the, what you have to do, and that's what I, that's the whole pivot thing that I was talking about earlier. When, when the climate changes, you have to be, you have to change with it and keep yourself relevant in the times that you're in, but there's going to always be women who go and get their hair done. I don't care how many YouTube videos there are. I'm not ever making my own wig. I might be like, ooh, that's cool. She made that wig. And then I'm going to be looking for somebody. To, I, I might call that girl and ask her to make my wig. Like, I'm not making my own wig. I'm not doing my own sew-in. I'm not doing my own hair. I ain't doing it. So you want to look for the other people like me. You want to find the, your audience. They're there. But when you get into that space of um, everybody doing this and everybody doing that, assuming everybody's doing the same thing, it, you are... It's a way of complaining and trying to, and the whole what was me thing. You need to stay ahead of the curve. I've told this story before, and I, and I like, I like the story because um, it's a powerful one. But not paying attention to what the market was doing is how Blockbuster went out of business. Netflix annihilated Blockbuster, and Netflix was a little bitty company when they first came out, and Blockbuster was a mega company, <laughs> and Netflix knocked like literally annihilated blockbuster you have to and that's because blockbuster didn't pay attention to where the where the technology was going and where um the consumer was going they didn't pay attention and by the time they started to realize wait a minute it was too late so you just have to pay attention if you love what you do then you need to figure out how to um, adjust and pivot with the times. And also it might be your time to do the next thing because God doesn't keep us in the same season the whole time. Like I, it is very clear to me that practicing plastic surgery, like the actual doing surgery every day, I I'm almost positive. I'm going to have a shorter career than most surgeons. I, I know for a fact that God has me called to do something much greater. I'm positive about that. No question. It's just a matter of when, but that's why I do some of these talks like this because I have a gift with that. Like that is a gift. And I actually get more satisfaction from having these talks with my patients who come in for a tummy tuck than I do doing the tummy tuck. And I like tummy tucks. That's my talent. Plastic surgery is my talent. Inspiring, catalyzing, helping people um, step beyond their fears. That's my gift. I'm, and when God removes me from physically doing plastic surgery so that I can devote more time to helping people um, step out and do what they're supposed to do, when he moves me in that direction, I'm going to go. So Y'all better get them tummy tucks while I'm still doing it. <laughs> yeah, if I had the capital, I would launch my skincare studio on private label of products. It's so overwhelming to even think about it. Nicolette. Um, you actually don't need a ton of capital to start a skincare studio. You don't need a ton of capital. It's not like starting a plastic surgery office. In fact, I started a little skincare studio before I opened up a Darabella when I first moved to Atlanta. And I did that with a couple thousand dollars. Um, the product line, that's actually not as hard as you might think it is either. I would start with one, probably the skincare studio first. And then once you get your bearings with that, then you know the next step would be your product line. But just freaking start. Don't be like, well, next year or after the kids graduate, well, when my, uh, well, once um, I get so and so out of my house or once I save this much money, all that stuff. 
when you save this much money, you're going to have something else going on. A family member is going to be sick and you're going to be trying to take care of them. Oh, it's the kids going to graduate in two years, so maybe you'll just wait till they go to college. Well, guess what? You wait till they get out of the house and now they're in college. So now you're going to say, well, when I finish paying for college, then I'll do it. Like, it's always something. So you waiting on all of these things to happen, you're going to keep living the same year over and over again like everybody else is doing. It is really sad how many people live the exact same year for 20 years in a row with no growth, no forward movement, nothing. And then get to 60 or 70 years old and be like, I wish I would have, could have, all that stuff. Like, just do it. Good job, Lanika. She said she just started a t-shirt business and custom jewelry store. It will be live in a few days. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I, for some reason, I can't jump lacking confidence. Always a go-getter, but for some reason, something is stopping me. Fear, age, money. So... When we're younger, when you're like three years old, when people are like, if you look at three or three year olds, they are not afraid of anything. They will try anything. They are always exploring. They're always, if they want something, they'll like, like say they want a toy. They'll walk up to the kid that's playing with the toy and just grab it from them and turn around and walk off with it. They're not afraid of nothing. And as we get older and start school, then people start telling you, you can't do this or you can't do that. Or, um, you know, you start, you just kind of start hearing people discouraging you from ex exploration. And by the time you're a grown up, you're so afraid of no's from people telling you what you can't do your whole life that you end up doing nothing. There's, is, there's no reason, I'm not going to say there's no reason to be afraid, but there's no reason to let fear stop you. What's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? Worried about people seeing you fail on social media? If you, if you announce to the world that you're starting this business and then people see you not thriving in the business, you're afraid of what they're going to say? Like, oh, she, see, I told her she shouldn't. Like, who the freak cares what they say? Who cares? Like what's so then they say that and then what? It doesn't matter. Like what other people think doesn't matter. If they're not, if they were people who were actually being brave themselves, they wouldn't even be saying that stuff about you. When I see somebody stepping out and trying, I'm I'm not saying, see, I knew she wasn't gonna be able to do it. I would never say that. I might give you some feedback on how to do it better. Because I understand your struggle. I know what you're going through because I struggle and I go with, and I've gone through it and some stuff I'm going through right now. But I'm growing. You know, like, who cares? Don't worry about what other people think. As long as you're alive, um, that means God still has work for you to do. So the age thing completely doesn't matter. Colonel Sanders of KFC didn't become a millionaire, billionaire, whatever it was he was. He made a lot of money. That didn't happen until after he retired in his 60s. He was in his 60s. He worked a bunch of penny ante jobs for his entire life selling vacuums and like all kind of insurance. Like he had all of these dumb jobs his whole life. And when he retired and got his first um, social security check, it was like a hundred dollars or something like that. And he was like, I can't believe I just worked my whole life and this is all I got. And he was, he was like, he had decided he was going to kill himself. He went out under the tree to write his, um, to write his, um, suicide letter and when he went out there to write the suicide letter he started writing down the things he would do if he could go and live life over again and then when he looked at the list he was like why don't i just do this now so instead of killing himself he took his his recipe for fried chicken and he started shopping it to all of these different restaurants he got a he got over a thousand no's before somebody said yes and when somebody said yes kentucky fried chicken was born and with, within a few years of that, he was a millionaire. That happened in his freaking 60s. So being afraid because of your age is crazy talk. Unless you're 100. I mean, don't, like, it's just, the money will make it, the money will come. Like, it'll, if you start, if you, if you have faith and you start, God will give you just enough. He'll keep you going. He'll sustain you. He'll give you just enough to get to the next step. He will give you enough. I promise. Just start. Start small. Just start.
This is a challenge for me. Now I'm setting my home up as a respite care to comfort those families who need a rest during terminal times. Oh, that's good. We can't worry about what we can't control. Oftentimes our imaginations are worse than reality. Girl, now you just said a word right there, honey. Let me click like, let me click love on that comment. That is the honest to goodness truth. Now, now, last night when I was doing my Facebook Live and I'm trying to see the comments and all, all I would get is the emojis. Now I'm trying to get the emojis and they won't come up. Facebook be getting on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> I'll come back and love that comment when this video is over. Marie Nessie King, you just said a word right there, girl. Yes, I do business consultations, and I, I definitely do it for estheticians. Absolutely. I can help you start that up with my eyes closed. That's right, Kenya. Only a plan A. Steve Harvey said, only have a plan A. There's no need for a plan B. Make a plan A. Always work. That's right. Winners don't plan to fail. <clears throat> you do fail at stuff, but you don't make a plan for the fail. Like, you just, <laughs> you don't make a plan to abort your plan. Okay, they said just having provisions in place to help the transition, not necessarily plan B. Okay, I'm, that's good. I just use that term for lack of appropriate word. Gotcha. <clears throat> I'm studying right now, but just wanted to say hi, doctor, and thanks for what you do. I got to watch replay. All right, Shawnetto, on the replay. I hope your studying goes well, girl. Waste of money. That's right. The degree thing, like, I talk about this all the time, and I've noticed that women, like, especially black women, they will be so degreed up. And it's obviously a good thing. It's not bad. But it's like, what what, it, what are you planning to do with it? Women in their 40s, like, I'm about to get my PhD and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, why? What are you going to do with it? That's a whole lot of money, a whole lot of time, and you don't even really have a plan for it. I think people will sometimes feel restless, unrest, like it's something else I'm supposed to be doing. And that's because there is something else you're supposed to be doing. But usually it's not another degree in, if you're in your 40s. Like, <laughs> it might be, but usually it's something. And, 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 getting, and going to school and working toward a degree makes you feel like you're moving forward. But sometimes you're not moving forward. You're just going in a circle. It depends on what you're trying to do, you know? Like, some of... Some of I know it seems kind of, like, strange hearing a doctor say that, but... Just if you get the degree, just make sure it's something that you actually need to do what God has planned for you to do. Just make sure you're not just doing it to say you're doing something. I started my baking business last year. I've always enjoyed baking pastries as a little girl with my grandmother and mother. It's my passion. I love what I do. Exactly. It's usually something that you have been doing. Like usually when it's all, it's almost always something because God puts that stuff in us when we're being created in the womb, like the stuff is there. It's always been there. It's not going to show up. You know, it doesn't just show up later. It's always been inside of you. What you're supposed to do is already in there. You just have to pay attention and start using it f for, um, use it, start paying attention to what that thing is because it's already there. I know that for sure. And once you figure out what that thing is that's already there, then you can figure out how to monetize it. Yes, that's right. Cosmetology will never expire. You just have to adjust to the changes. You are so right. My parents have always told me to keep my finger on the pulse of trends within the industries. You're right. Oh, thank you, girl. I've been trying to tell my mother that. She like, everybody, everybody, I cannot stand it here when people say everybody doing this or everybody doing that. Everybody is not doing nothing. Everybody is not doing anything. Everybody ain't doing anything. There's always people who are doing something else. Thanks, y'all. Hey, sissy, my sister's on here. Chantilly Chanel, that's my sister. Okay, I just went to school because I want to be an esthetician. I'm also a cosmetologist and do makeup. If you're a cosmetologist, why do you have to go to esthetician school? Because they teach you the basics of aesthetics in cosmetology school. Okay, so she said, I drive a bus, my main money flow, but it's not my passion like hair, makeup, skin, beauty. Yeah, so... Um, you need to get that. You need to start using your aesthetics, even if maybe you'll start off on the weekends or 
I don't know what your schedule is like with the bus, but basically you need to start fitting the esthetician piece in when the, when the time that you block off that is devoted to you doing, um, taking care of clients fills up, then you got to give it more time. Um, and eventually you'll have to quit the job. Now, this is one mistake that a lot of people make. They will try to hold on to their job for dear life for way too long. So, um, when you get to that point, it gets, it gets, it starts to hinder your business because you're giving all of your good hours to your job first. Like you wake up and you go to work at your job in the morning when your mind is fresh and clear and you give them all your clear brain. And by the time four or five o'clock comes, when you get off work, all these folks that got on your nerves, you've been thinking about what you need to do all day for your business, but you couldn't do it because you were at work. Um, you probably are hating going to work at this point because you know, it's other stuff you should be doing. So you so you finish the work day aggravated. And now with your aggravated, agitated, exhausted mind you're gonna start working on your business girl bye honey that's setting it up for failure right there you want to give your fresh brain to you to yourself <laughs> and your wore out brain to your job <laughs> like people have it backwards and then they wonder why they never can get their business to work for them why they can't get it to grow but it's because they're giving all their good mind power to the to the job and they and they're too afraid to trust and bet on themselves I think you just saw my whole life. I'm a nurse in California, but I love aesthetics of all kinds. But I want to seg into beauty. Thank you. Girl, go for it. All right, y'all. Folks that came in my office, I probably, my second patient's probably here. <laughs> hey, Sharon. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and get off. And um, my next talk will probably be plastic surgery. Oh, listen. Okay, so listen. I am... Speaking, I got a couple speaking engagements coming up. One is the Success Women's Conference in Biloxi, Mississippi. I think it's September 20th and 21st. I'll be speaking there. And then um, in, in October, I'll be um, speaking at the EPIC Conference, the EPI Conference. And if you purchase VIP tickets for the EPI Conference, you can choose... One, which speaker you want to be at their table for the power brunch and so you could if you buy a v, vip ticket you can um sit with me until my table fills up you can sit with me and be able and be able to um have lunch with me and talk about whatever it is that you have going on like so i'm we're basically the all the speakers will be there to help people move forward in whatever it is they're doing or if you're already started a business help you grow it it's some phenomenal speakers there um they're all I'm excited to go and learn from the people, the other people on the um, roster um, that are speaking. And they're all successful entrepreneurs and um, millionaires. So it's not just random folks. It's not just a popularity contest. It's a real business conference with real successful entrepreneurs that are teaching you how to move forward. It's not an empowerment conference. It's a business conference. So... Um, you can register for that at www.vepiconference.com. Let me type that in. And it's in Atlanta. Conference.com. Dr. Benny, you are always so inspiring and informative. Thank you for being who God created you to be. You encourage me every time I watch your video. I share your information and videos with a lot of people. I've never met you, but I feel like I know you because you make us feel so comfortable. Please keep being you. Thank you so much, Angela. That was really nice. Have you already thought about mentoring? Do you already? You have a gift. Love listening to you. Thank you, Michonne. Yes, I have. And I'm. that's what I, when I was saying earlier. I know that... Um, God has something much bigger for me than just doing plastic surgery. I love plastic surgery, but I know that that's not, I understand now that that's not the end game for Myla Nicole Bennett. I actually think the plastic surgery was just kind of like the nectar or the honey <laughs> to draw people to me because he wants me to act, impact lives, impact people's lives in a much bigger, deeper way. And I do it now. Like, People who 
Um, my patients who come to me, people will come to me for surgery and I'll end up talking to them about business, talking to them about their lives, about their esteem. Um, I think God had me work at that lipo center to do awake. Since I do surgery, since I do liposuction on a lot of my clients awake, that gives us time to talk. <laughs> And I've had people literally start businesses from the conversations that I had with them while I was doing liposuction. Like literally business born while they're getting lipo. It's like lipo coaching or lipo counseling. <laughs> it's crazy. And I and if I if the patient was a, so that's you know a few hours that I'm sitting there me and the patient um talking about whatever. They call me. It's so crazy like and I'm like, that's that was part of God's plan. It's amazing how, like, you just never know the the subtleties, the stuff you go through, and the stuff you do. It's all it all comes together for a masterpiece in the end. Like it come, it all comes together. All the things that you experience, all the things that you go through, breakups, jobs, losing jobs, losing friends, gaining friends, gaining associates. Um, when you that one time when you volunteered at this or that. All of that stuff is the ingredients for something special. All of it. So, I know that God has something bigger in store for me than me simply doing surgery. And you would think that that's a huge thing. Like, you're a surgeon. But that's not it. Like, I'm positive of that. But Doc, here's the thing. My respite care birthed out of people I hire for in-home. 24-hour critical care was selling their services to the families that hired me. Stealing everything I gave them. So this is a plan B. That's part of learning about business. So I, I've had people steal from me. I've had people lie to me. I've had people siphon clients out of my office and take them to other people's offices. I've seen all of it. I've had um, times where my business account was in the negative and I'm like, and I had payroll and I'm like, how in the hell am I going to pay these people? And they got paid. You know, I have had, I've been through all of it. And all of it made me learn. I've learned so much. Like, I've learned so much. I'm not scared of nothing. Is it time? Bennett's teacher? Oh, okay, y'all. I got to go. My son's teacher on the phone. Maybe that's who was just calling me uh, on my cell phone. Ask her if she was just calling me on my cell phone. I got to get off, y'all. This was good. I probably should do this again. I'm sorry I'm leaving so abruptly. I was in the middle of a story. All right. So, it was her. Okay, talk one second. All right, so I got to go. My baby's teacher on the phone. I'm I'm a mother first. <laughs> okay, so um, the the EPI conference, I, I tagged that in the comments. You guys should totally go register. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a game changer. It's a business conference, not an empowerment conference. I mean, you will get empowered because we're all fabulous people, but you are going to learn business stuff. It's not, it's not fluff. It is real. So, and it's affordable. So... I hope to see some of you guys there, um, and I'll talk to y'all later. I'm Dr. Myla Bennett of Adair Bella Plastic Surgery and Medical Spa in Johns Creek, Georgia. You can reach me on my website at www.adarabella.com. -E -E -R -R -E -E Thanks, Ebony. Ebony is the founder of the Epic Conference, and she just tagged the, um, and you guys should follow her too. She does a series called Coinology, and she teaches, oh, she, te I, I'm always on her Coinology sessions because I'm learning stuff. Like, she's a, a powerhouse. She's a mogul, and she's also my publicist. <laughs> All right, y'all, I got to go. Bye.